today what I'm going to show you is how to make something really fancy smancy with the resin crepe which is brilliant and readily available in the United States. I think it's brilliant. And combine that with normal resin. What we're going to do first is we're going to mix up some different colours. Now if you saw my experiment with resin crete and colouring it in a previous video that I'll link at the end of this one then you'll know that acrylic paint worked really well and I'm going to use the Arteza iridescent paints plus a little bit of glitter of course. So the first thing you need to do is mix up your resin crete and I'm going to mix this up as a quicker cure, which means for every 100 grams of the base, which is this, I need 30 grams of water. Really easy, I show all that in the previous video. And now I've got my colors mixed up, they mix up really, really easily. I'm going to fill my heart mold up. Now I'm gonna fill it right up with the colors at the moment. I'm putting a bit of each color in each one of them. I'm not making them exact, I'm just blobbing the colors in them, each one of them. Bit of the black and then some of the pink. And any that are not quite full enough, I'll just go through and put a bit more of some of the other colors in. I was a bit scarce with that one, I think. Until they're virtually filled to the top. And now what I'm going to do is just mix those colors around in there like that, making sure I get right to the bottom. And then I'm gonna leave these to cure. They shouldn't take more than about 40 minutes to be able to demold them. I'm just giving them a bit of a tap because that will get rid of any air that comes out of them. I can also go around and tidy my mold up as well where I've got this massive overpour if I want to like that. That will really help. There won't be quite so much overpour on them, but that'll be easy to snap off once it's all cured up lovely. These are all cured now, and it's all about taking them out. They didn't take long to cure, and they will come out, and you'll be so surprised at how nice they look. Oh, look how beautiful they've come out, and how lovely that colours. They've really come out beautiful. I'm going to use this mould now, again, so I need to ensure that this mould is lovely and clean, and it literally will just crumble off there. And then I'll give it a quick wipe over, and everything will be lovely. Well, now we've got these out, and they're all clean, and the mould is lovely and clean as well, look. What I'm going to do is start cutting these into some different shapes. Now, this cuts really easily. You don't have to do too much with it while it's at this stage, because it's still got that little bit of softness to it. I'm doing it on my cutting board, because I think that's the easiest way to do it. I don't want to cut through my silicon mat and I'm using a scalpel blade here. So that'll do me for one piece. And the other thing that I'm going to use to break these up with are my jewelry tools. Actually, I might even do a bit out of there as well. So we can have that bit there, like that. So that's one, and I don't want those pieces. And then here I can break off this bit here like this. And I'm just gonna make some random shape with the tools, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna replace them in the mold to stop them moving around as well and how I'm going to seal these. So I've cut them all into the shapes that I want and this is the negative bit is the area that I'm going to fill with resin. But before I do that, I need to seal these and what I'm going to use to seal them is polyacrylic varnish. And the reason is all this type of casting stuff does have a little bit of porosity to it. <laughs> That's a word. It is porous and I don't want the resin to go into it and spoil it. And the other thing is I'm also going to stick these back in the mold so the resin doesn't get underneath it. Two coats of this varnish all the way over everywhere will be enough and also it finishes them off beautifully. So make sure you do the backs and the edges as well and it's really easy to brush on. These pieces are all dry now, they've all had two coats, but now what I need to do is I need to be able to stick these back in this mould without them coming up and the resin that I use getting under them. And what I'm going to use for that is this brilliant glue. Now, I'm not sponsored by Tack It Over. I don't even think they know I exist, to be honest. I use this an awful lot for a lot of my projects, for in here and also in my other studio for my other channel and all I'll do is this is all nicely cleaned and varnished I will paint this on I won't do the edges but I will paint this on right up to the edges all the way over on all the pieces and then I let this dry it's important to let it dry because once it's dry that's when it becomes tacky 
Don't worry about it being on the piece. I'll show you how to deal with that once we've got the resin and everything cured. So do all the pieces like that and let that dry. It won't take long to dry, normally about five minutes. If it's taking a little bit longer, blast it with a hairdryer. <laughs> Now my pieces are fully dry, all I need to do is put them back into this mould. Always make sure that your mould is 100% dry and dust free when you're doing this because the last thing you want to do is introduce any dirt and then gently push these pieces into that mold like this so they adhere to it now don't play around with this too much because it's just a light seal that you've got here and then once you're happy that they're all in there again make sure that in the positions they should be give them a little bit of a push down and then leave them alone as best as you possibly can for about five or ten minutes and while you're doing that you can mix up your resin i've mixed up my resin and as i'm using some clear as well what i've used is the three times uv protect resin by j diction brilliant resin and it's ideal for things like this and as you can see i've got my little pots of all different sparkly things and i'm using a pipette for some of them so that i don't mess it up and get it everywhere and pour it all over bits and pieces and just squeezing that in through the gaps don't forget i'm also on facebook and instagram the links for those are in the description below check them out love to see you over there this one has got mica powder in. I love mica powder. It really does give a lovely iridescent, rich finish to it. And you'll see at the end as well how well this comes out. And I'm using a variety of different mica powders for this. Thank you to all my members whose names are coming up now. If you'd like to become a member and benefit from all the perks that you get from being a member and having access to me in almost real time, the link is in the description below. So again, just filling these up. This is the glitter. And then once I've got them all filled up, I'm just popping any bubbles that may have come up. There isn't really many because the three times UV Protect actually doesn't have that many bubbles in it. Massive thank you to all the people who got me a coffee last month. You guys really do get me through the months. And now let it cure up. These are all cured now, so let's take them out. And they should come out nice and easy. Now, some of them where the tacket over was have not let any resin through at all, which is great. And some have. So this one, for instance, has. But the other great thing about the tacket over is it will repel that resin so you can easily pull it off like that. And all it takes is your finger now to bring it and it will come straight off of there like that. So you've got a nice clean edge. As an example, here's another one. I'll take this bit off here. Just use my nail. If you don't have any nails, then just use some a little pair of tweezers or something. And that should just peel off because it's created that lovely barrier there and it will give you those really nice straight lines. So I found the easiest way to get this off is with a baby wipe and you don't actually need to rub very hard at all. You just need to go over it a couple of times and you can actually see it comes off. Now I love baby wipes as you know I have them in my studio all the time and these are the non-alcohol ones and once that's all off and it's dry again then I will give it its last coat of varnish only varnishing the resin crate, not the actual resin as well. Well, these have all finished now. They've all been varnished and completely finished off. I absolutely love them. I think that is my favourite one. I really like that. I also like the one with the transparent resin in and the few hearts but overall i like them all this is how versatile this resin crete is and you can use it with resin obviously and color it and do lots of things and the possibilities are endless for jewelry for coasters for pictures oh key rings all sorts of things hope you've enjoyed this video please boot that like button if you have don't forget to check out the video that's coming up next take care enjoy your crafting bye